So last week we learned that Bernie Sanders will be staying in the race for the foreseeable future. In fact, he intends on debating Joe Biden if he uh, isn't a coward and actually chooses to debate Bernie Sanders. But predictably, Democrats, specifically the Democratic Party establishment, they're not too happy with Bernie Sanders' decision because they want him to drop out immediately so that way we can wrap this thing up and coordinate Joe Biden. And because that's not happening, well, they are having a meltdown. And this article from the Washington Post explains the situation, I think, really well. And let me just tell you, their tears are delicious. Quote, behind the growing fear among many Democrats that Senator Bernie Sanders' continued presence in the presidential race could spell doom in November is the belief that they've seen it happen before in the last campaign. Although Sanders has long pledged to do all he can to help the eventual nominee defeat President Trump, Democrats are still haunted by the last grueling battle, which didn't end after it became clear that Clinton would be the nominee, and instead stretched into the summer convention and beyond. Then, as now, an impassioned band of Sanders supporters voiced their displeasure loudly and widely, sometimes echoing the harshest attacks of Trump and his allies with little reproach from Sanders, so we're just like the MAGA chuds, according to them. Moved by an urgency to come together against Trump as the coronavirus pandemic has upended the presidential race, some party leaders feel that Sanders should end his campaign and help the Democratic Party position itself for the November general election. Quote, I just think it's a terrible decision for him to make because he looks very selfish, said former Democratic Senator Barbara Boxer of California, who backs Biden. If Sanders is genuine about going all in to defeat Trump, then get out, she said. Although Sanders personally is not waging a scorched earth campaign against Biden, some of his most visible supporters continue to rail against the former vice president's policy ideas and question his cognitive abilities, a trend that worries party leaders. Senior Democrats have expressed concern in recent days that Sanders is once again obliquely giving his supporters permission to continue to question Biden's fitness as the Democratic nominee. There is growing anticipation for him to start to help, said one senior Democratic strategist who spoke on the condition of anonymity to speak more frankly about the concerns. For his movement to be successful, he needs to find the right way to land the plane at the Joe Biden International Airport. Among the moderates, there remains a frustration that the Sanders forces demand that the winning primary candidates conform to his views and not the other way around. They suggest the situation is even more dire this year than in 2016, given the party's antipathy toward Trump. So a couple of things stand out to me. The first is that they are very clearly, uh, explicitly, <laughs> blaming Bernie Sanders and his supporters for Hillary Clinton's loss in 2016. Let me remind you, she didn't set foot in Wisconsin. But Bernie's to blame. So they're saying, well, look, you already helped Hillary Clinton lose in 2016, so do you really want that to happen again? Now, the second thing is that they want him to drop out, because if he doesn't, then he's being selfish. Uh, there was a quote from a former Clinton aide who said, look, we shouldn't pretend like Bernie cares about anything but himself. I'm paraphrasing, but that was the sentiment. Now, again, I want to stress to you that before Joe Biden became the frontrunner pre-Super Tuesday, we were looking at a situation where if Bernie Sanders ended up with a plurality of pledged delegates, even if, you know, he had a strong plurality, if he didn't get that 50 plus 1% majority, well, Democrats would try to opt for a contested convention and steal it away from Bernie. Even Joe Biden said if he, uh, if Bernie gets plurality, he's opting for a contested convention. Elizabeth Warren said the same thing. All Democrats said, look, I know what I've said about wanting to beat Donald Trump, but if Bernie doesn't get a majority, we're going to try to steal it from him. But it's funny because now that the shoe is on the other foot, they're not really saying that. <laughs> uh, they're screaming, Bernie, what are you doing? Get out. Do you not see that Donald Trump is the president and we need to defeat him? Well, where was that energy a couple of weeks ago before Super Tuesday? When uh, Bernie was looking like the eventual nominee and all of the Democrats, except for him, claimed that they would try to get super delegates to steal it away from Bernie at the convention. Where was that energy then? Where was the urgency to defeat Donald Trump back then when it looked like Bernie Sanders was going to be the nominee? It's funny how quickly they move the goalpost, right? All of a sudden, defeating Donald Trump is really important. It's priority number one. It wasn't before Super Tuesday, but now it really is. And, you know, staying in the race 
is the worst thing that Bernie can possibly do. Imagine if Bernie actually said, no, I'm going to opt for a contested convention and try to get superdelegates to steal it away from Joe Biden and give it to me. Imagine if he said that. There would be like shrieks from all the Democratic Party establishment members nonstop, right? But he's very politely opting to stay in the race and not even go negative against Joe Biden. And they're still losing it. These people are hypocrites and they stand for absolutely nothing. And it's interesting to me how they are shamelessly suggesting that, you know, getting Bernie supporters to back Biden, it's not Biden's responsibility. Actually, it is Bernie's responsibility. A former Obama advisor actually said this pretty explicitly in response to a tweet from ABC News, which says that 15% of Bernie Sanders supporters would back Trump over Biden. Well, this is what Ben LeBolt had to say. This is a huge problem and something Bernie Sanders needs to work on every day from now until November. He is responsible for the outcome with this segment of voters and his effort to persuade them to support Joe Biden should start today. So it's not Joe Biden's responsibility to win over Bernie Sanders supporters. It is solely Bernie Sanders' responsibility to get his supporters to back Biden in spite of zero concessions being made at this point in time. Like, do you see how ridiculous this is? I feel like the only people who can see how hypocritical the Democratic Party establishment is are progressives. Like, nobody else can see it. Centrists don't care at all that every other contender wanted to steal the nomination away from Bernie Sanders just a couple of weeks ago. But all of a sudden, now that the race is down to two people, just the fact that Bernie Sanders is in the race is heresy. They have a different set of standards that apply to you, that apply to Bernie Sanders and progressives, that they don't apply to themselves. And this shouldn't surprise anyone. If you've been following Democratic Party politics and intra-party warfare, their goal is to crush the left. They don't want to win over the left. They'd rather lose than actually adopt any of the policies offered by the left. Their goal is to silence the left and uh, get them to acquiesce. But adopting their policies to get their votes, not going to happen. They're not interested in that. They would rather lose to Donald Trump because, again, they have no reason to support Joe Biden over Donald Trump. Think about this. If you are just a member of the House of Representatives in the Democratic Party, how does having Donald Trump as president affect you more than a Joe Biden presidency? Well, in some ways, it's better. It might be worse for the country, but you can fundraise off of Donald Trump. That's been a really lucrative strategy for Democrats. On top of that, you don't have to do jack shit. You don't have to piss off the base by actually proposing, you know, policies like or shooting down policies like Medicare for all. You can just pass a bunch of policies and say, we really tried to pass them, but our hands are tied because uh, Mitch McConnell won't let us vote on them. Like you can you can do all of that. There's a lot of excuses if Trump is president, but if Biden is president, all those excuses kind of just go away. And now you kind of have to put up, right? You kind of have to put up or shut up. And it's easier for them to kind of just sit on their asses for another four more years, watch the country go to shit, and fundraise off of uh, Donald Trump. The situation is really grim. And the fact that we are forced to share a party with Democrats, it shouldn't happen. The left should have their own party and corporate Democrats should have to share a party with Republicans because they are more ideologically aligned. The only thing, in theory, that progressives agree with the center on are social issues, but Democrats don't even care about that. They've proven they couldn't care less about that. I mean, when it comes to this Me Too issue, which is hugely significant, what have Democrats done? After crying about Brett Kavanaugh and Dr. Christine Blasey Ford's allegations, they're silent when it comes to Joe Biden. So anything that they claimed to believe in, they don't in actuality. It's lip service. Because if they abandon, you know, their support for social issues, then they have nothing to pitch to the left. They can't say, well, at least we're better on trans issues. At least we're going to look out for marginalized people a little bit more. But when push comes to shove, they never, ever deliver. So, I mean... I don't even know what to say anymore. This isn't surprising, but the Democratic Party is going to do the same exact thing they did in 2016. And mark my words, if they lose to Donald Trump, 
They're not going to have any introspection whatsoever. They're not going to have a single autopsy. They're not going to try to change their tactics to win because so long as the left is, you know, powerless and silenced, that is what they care the most about because then they can continue to be an opposition party but not offend their corporate donors. But the minute they actually do take power and they've got to deliver, well, um, that's an issue. Because uh, they're going to piss off their corporate donors if they do anything that the left wants, like Medicare for All. So the situation we are in is uh, incredibly frustrating. And left-wing parties all over the place have failed. Uh, supposedly left-wing parties all over the place, all over the world, have uh, failed the countries. That's why you see the rise of these right-wing demagogues in places like India, Turkey, Brazil. It's because the left loses a leader. The left ends up... Um, having to acquiesce and join centrists, and it just it never works out. You know, dissatisfaction with the establishment has led to the resurgence of fascism. And if Democrats were serious about defeating Donald Trump, then they would take the left seriously. But because they're not, then whenever they fearmonger about Donald Trump, you know, their fears are valid. We should fear Donald Trump. But I don't believe that they fear Donald Trump. I think they're trying to get you scared so you support them no matter what. But I don't buy anything that they say. These people are full of shit, and they're not your allies. They're your enemy.